Welcome back to New Rock Stars, you dang whippersnappers. Technology! Kevin Feige is canonically technology as of the finale of She-Hulk Attorney at Law on Disney+. Plus. Now you use out there may think that having an electronic Feige connected to all the 5G in the air for your convenience is hip and cool and filled with the drip. But I'm here today to inform you that this now puts the MCU in danger. Because what if I told you that Kevin 5G is about to be hacked for the glory of Hydra? This is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love. My name is MT, and going rogue with me today is a woman more rogue than rogue from the X-Men. It's Jessica Clemens. What's going on, Hi, Jessica Clemens, major (laughs) Jubilee fan right here. Number one Jubilee fan. Yes, she is the number one Jubilee (laughs) fan. Do not let Jessica tell you any different at any other time than this time. She's telling the truth right now. Mm -hmm. Why do you hate Jubilee so? I will never (laughs) forgive you. She's that useful. Um, (laughs) (laughs) She's cool, and she's the best X-Men, the most powerful. And my goodness, could it be, doth mine eyes deceive me, why it's Dom Toretto's long-lost little sister, Whitney Van Langham, Toretto. (laughs) Yeah. And I've got beef with The Rock, baby. And that's why uh, Black Adam's coming out today. Because we're having a fight later. And it's going to be good. Fi- Yo, that is the weirdest beef in Hollywood. I'll never get over it. I ho- kind of it hope sure it never is. ends. Because it, it sure it's just is. new chapters every, every, new, uh, every now and then. And finally, we have Peter Parker's new guy in the chair. Because he forgot everybody. Everyone forgot him, I mean. It's Eddie Villanueva. <laughs> Thanks. I feel so much better about coming back. Oh man. I, I mean, I just, I just have to say, I'm Team Rock on that uh, F9 kind of stuff going on. So you just are, I mean, like, who team isn't rock? Team Rock? Come on. I mean, not, honestly, like, I'm yet. absolutely not. Wait, is it between really? him team, and Team Toronto and Tyrese Gibson? No, not Tyrese Gibson, wasn't it? No, no it's, it's it's between him and uh, Vin, Vin Diesel. Diesel. Vin Diesel. He and Vin Diesel are a fight. I love Vin Diesel. He and in real Gibson, I, love Vin, I think, are fine. I love Vin Diesel. Yeah. I love Vin Diesel. I also love Vin Diesel. Oh. See, I'm not, I don't yeah. choose sides. I just love, I love both of my bald-headed babies. Just you, you know what? Family you fights so sometimes. Much. That's just how family works, you know Dude, what I'm saying? family yes. fights sometimes. Sometimes all the time. They just need to go to some family counseling. The, they'll get into it, and then afterwards they'll have a family potluck or a family barbecue. That's exactly. They'll yeah, have that's, a family that's barbecue Just outside. like the end of She-Hulk. That was that's basically exactly. just the ending of the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> this brings us to our first topic of today, the She-Hulk finale. Speaking of the She-Hulk finale, um, other than the amazing Fast and Furious uh, cookout that we got, the most crazy thing from that episode was, of course, the revelation that Kevin Feige was indeed a robot the entire time in the MCU, and he makes the MCU narrative in his robot brain. However, this presents a massive, massive problem because I believe, this is the first topic of today, that Zola, inside of the Ultron Infinity body, will take over the Kevin installation robot and be able to transform the narrative of the MCU completely, giving him ultimate power i'm already giving us a rogue is a piece of data <laughs> you're already I like giving the us idea. a rogue you don't even need to explain it but go on i love this already i'm very into this <laughs> because we know like from um what if we know that um the zola zola took over the ultron infinity body and now he is locked in eternal battle with killmonger um who tried to take the infinity stones for himself um so i believe that uh this there, there was a possibility that they exit that prison and Ultron Infinity, um, Zola Infinity, takes on the goals of the original Ultron. He's like, you know what? Let me just keep ascending higher and higher and higher and try to become the ultimate being in all of Marvel, which is Kevin, um, So who is also a robot. So we could be seeing Zola, a Zola MCU, the M- the Z- ZCU, the MZU, I don't know, Marvel Zola MCZU, universe. ZCU, the Makuzu. Makuzu. <laughs> That sounds like a, a show on PBS. Makuzu. With the, mm-hmm. the, with the, uh, right uh, after flying. Caillou. <laughs> Caillou and Makuzu. Um, my God, Caillou is the most annoying being on the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, what do you guys think of this of this theory of uh, Zola taking over? I, I like it. I like the idea because, I mean, with everything else that's been coming out in terms of movie news and so forth, I mean, if you think about it, King the Conqueror is about to take on Killmonger, 
in a whole nother movie universe where mm. they're going to be boxing about. And let's be honest, <laughs> Kang looks ripped. I mean, yo, my dude, God. I saw that trailer. I was like, Kang was Michael B. Jordan, ripped. you ripped too, but I don't know about this mm-hmm. one. I don't know mm-hmm. about this one. We're going from last black man in San Francisco to this, and they are two the totally different is, no, body no, types. The thing is, no, no, the thing is, it's me and my mom were on the phone about this for two hours yesterday. Uh-huh. He's always had that body. <laughs> it's just always been hidden. Uh, really? It's always been hidden. Even in Lovecraft Country, he was always, mm. but it was like when he pulled up in those white tight shirts, I was like, I was like SpongeBob when he licks the, he's licking the ice. And like, I want to lick his stomach. Oh my God. I, wait, me and my mom are like watching the paparazzi and we're like, yes, look at these images of our man. Like it's, it's. He's oh so, oh, keep man. going keep going though sorry he he oh. is i i mean i have to admit he is a man's man i mean the way he looks the way it's just like sculpted oh. and the way his form is just boom like seriously sounds like eddie's warm for his form baby and we love to see it we support <laughs> I, I'm I'm secure in who I am. I'm like that man is fine. Nah, man, get get warm for that form. I ain't stopping you. Yeah, he is a handsome dude. Like he is literally a work of art, quite yeah. literally. So you got you got Kang and you got Killmonger. And they're about to fight, and then as they're fighting, it's gonna weaken what's his name, uh, Killmonger, in the whole little bubble. Uh, Ultron's gonna get out. He's gonna do his thing. He's gonna find a way to break the fourth wall because he already knows how to break through dimensions. I I feel like there's so much credibility to your to your theory. Honestly, even if it's going so rogue as to involving other movie cinema universe cinematic universes, I feel like this is completely something plausible. So it's just like gonna get released and he's gonna be like, ah, I'm blinded by all of the abs. So many abdominal <laughs> muscles. No. The first thing that Zola does in his Kevin Robot body is go see Creed 3. He's like, ah, the abs. And he's like, no. beautiful. Beautiful. Now back to ruining the MCU. <laughs> Not Kevin Feige, but Zola as Kevin. Zola's whole thing is that he just, he just mm-hmm. envies the bodies of Jonathan Majors and <laughs> Michael right? B. Jordan but so like, much. He's racist, so he's just like, I don't want to admit that I, I think black men are sexy. I don't want to admit it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm kind of like, is it wise to have a Nazi possess the body of the head of Disney? But then I'm like, well, I guess it wouldn't be the first time. Oh, The head of Disney? Him. Nazi? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Dunking on a dead guy. Walt Disney, <laughs> Dunkin baby. Dunking on Disney. Hey, there you woo. go. It's a whoosh. But no, like, I just think that, like, this opens a lot of, like, really unique opportunities for, like, let's say, like, the Zola t- takes over Kevin Feige. What does that mean for, like, our universe, or, like, the copy of our universe in the MCU? Like, like, do we, I would love to see, like, elements of our reality, like, be involved in a huge conflict. Like, all right. Now, like, you know, like Zola is in real life, you know, L.A. or like real life New York and like, you know, like Gwenpool or like real life, like the superheroes have to interact with our real life. And like maybe the Fantastic Four. They're already setting the stage for making a statement that bringing in Deadpool doesn't mean that's going to be the beginning of breaking the fourth wall. She-Hulk, the series, has already done that. They've already stated we are going to have characters who are going to break that fourth wall. And if somebody like, you know, Jennifer Walters is able to do that, then that kind of opens the door for so many other characters to traverse into that. Not to mention, we're getting conversations of uh, other dimensions. We're getting conversations of other universes. We're getting conversations of all these different things. Not to mention Quantumania that's going to be coming about. It's going to reset a lot of uh, timelines. There is nothing off the table that is capable of utilizing that whole perspective of breaking the fourth wall coming in these movies to come. And I, I, I'm I really believing that they're going to try to make it as general of an opportunity for everybody so that when Deadpool comes, it's not the only thing people are going to be waiting for for him to do. Oh, he's going to break the fourth wall. He's going to do this. Because, I mean, obviously with that, we get opportunities where like Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. It goes super meta. If they're already setting the stage for meta humor then we know that this is a very likely possibility. And it's something that has already been kind of paved the way with She-Hulk. And like, you know, I feel like with the animation medium um, of What If, like you can just have that story be part of the What If series and be like, hey, uh, what if freaking Ultron, I mean, Zola Ultron won and like he's literally takes over Kevin. And because like 
Kevin could easily be adapted with the animation. Be like, all right, here's Kevin again. Um, and <laughs> here's Kevin know, again. He's, he's back. <laughs> he's back. And now um, he's the new Infinity Gauntlet that everyone wants. I don't know. I feel like it'd be really cool to involve him in season two. Plus, I mean, Kevin Feige definitely wants to be in the MCU himself. I mean, he's already made his entire world about it. Why not be in it himself, too? Honestly, like, I was really hoping to see a physical Kevin Feige mm -hmm. in that finale. Like, I they was said Kevin. Too. I wanted a real one. In fact, I think it's lazy that he didn't show up to even play <laughs> himself. <laughs> Like, come on, Kevin, get a job. What were you right. busy with? Seriously, you're just planning the next three phases of Marvel. Come right. on, you could take and a enjoying break. Your you could take a minute to do a little cameo. Ugh. I would really have really enjoyed just like a really candid conversation between Jen and Kevin, just like in a room, just being like, hey, you can't do this. Or like just looking through his files. And like, I would love to like to see like, her exposes X-Men plans like on a piece of paper. It's like, hey, look, here it is. Found I don't him. know, it'd be really cool. Got him. <laughs> I, I almost was hoping to have kind of like the Wizard of Oz thing where he's actually behind the curtain, mm -hmm. like moving levers and yeah. stuff like that. It's like just a puppet. <laughs> that would be really You're funny. not supposed to see this. This isn't part of the CG. And then he closes the I'm curtain. I'm sure she wrote something like that, but it just, ne Kevin Feige was probably like, no, we're not going to do that. He turned down a lot of things. He was the reason why she ended up just having to use a robot. Which is interesting because he was the one that chose to go to the writer's room. So, hmm. 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 Mm. Show off the writers, mm. but not yourself, little bitch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Little bitch. But no, uh, okay. So how do you think the MCU would change if Zola was in charge? Like, what do you think Zola would do to the Avengers? Like, for example. Nazis. Mm. He's a Nazi. He'd do a little <laughs> Nazi thing. He'd do Nazi he's shit. What Nazi else is yeah. he Nazi, do? Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. He'd keep, the he'd Nazi keep literally majority of the Thunderbolts, <laughs> except for the two. Mm. <laughs> he'd keep everybody but the two and then be fine with the rest. He'd be like, I actually really like U.S. Agent. He's a really good guy. Um, <laughs> he's a pretty good guy. I, U.S. You know. great, I think it would yeah. probably follow the same suit of kind of what we see in What If where they're trapped in the that orb that Doctor Strange has made or whatever, but maybe he gets out or something. I don't know. I just think it, it'll be more along the lines of like, I'm going to blow up the moon. Like, I want him to be as like cartoony mm -hmm. as MODOK. <gasps> I'm going to blow up Here the I moon. Here I go. I'm going to blow up the moon. I'm going to blow up the moon. Um, and then the moon will be, <laughs> and then like Saturn will be for the Nazis. Uh, and <laughs> we'll make another civilization. It's despicable. Saturn. Only, yeah, it'll, he'll, yeah, there'll be despicable mead, but like only racist style. But yeah, I just think he probably <laughs> put himself back into the narrative as much as he was back in the day, less about any of the newer mm. villains because uh, i guess the older mcu was all like these are tangible people that are you can touch whereas now it's like this is a mm. god here's a demon monster king here's yeah. a guy with the flaming skull yeah. so it's like those people are untouchable so you probably be like we're gonna go back to the touchables it's like the expendables mm. <laughs> we're gonna go back to the expendables let's go back to the touchables <laughs> let's go back to the touchables. that's a great way to, <laughs> to introduce that <laughs> Touchables is such a sketchy term. Right? <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. It's the name of my website. Uh, it's my a very goodness. good website that does the very legal good things. There are the touchables and the untouchables in this world. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, no. It was a stupid joke. Never mind. Uh, this is my joke. Wait. You guys ready for it? Yeah, um, sure. Just <laughs> but no, um, what's it called? If Zola was in charge because he, he's racist, um, he'd probably change... The name of the new Black Panther movie to Wakanda for never because he doesn't like the brown. Oh, he was like, and just he's like, that guy can stay, and it's Everett Ross. He's like, that guy can stay. Yeah, it's just it's. He's right. just like Everett Ross can absolutely be in the sequel. He's the only one. <laughs> that guy and the whales, and that is it. That is he would it. actually and make no Ryan Gosling the new Black Panther. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> let's let's bring this train to the station. This theory of Zola taking over um, the Kevin installation at Marvel Studios HQ. What do you guys think of this? Is it Rogus? Is it Bogus? Is it Ogus? I think it's It's Rogus. definitely, oh, go ahead. Eddie, what's going on here? Oh. What's going on I'm here, sorry. Eddie? What's you going what? on? I'm Are you guys I'm gonna, twins? I'm just What's gonna, going on Eddie, Yeah, okay. While Eddie leaves, I'll go on to say. <laughs> Mary Kate Nash over here. Jesus Christ. I think it's Rogus. <laughs> <laughs> and I stick to what go. I say. I'm not an oath breaker like half the people in House of the Dragon. I said it was a Rogus at the beginning and oh, it stays a Rogus. Fighting words. Yeah, I'm going to be the one that's hung up in the okay. corner. But, you know, whatever. Not an oath breaker. <laughs>
I agree. I definitely feel like this is a roguish theory. I mean, it's definitely got plausible, you know, factors in it. We've already seen some of the road already paved for us. Um, and plus, I mean, how much fun would it be? It looks like Marvel's really taking a swing at just having fun with a lot of their properties with, you know, in terms of breaking the fourth wall and doing a lot of fun stuff. Um, I feel like a lot more, you know, characters are going to be seen in this way. They're going to be given opportunities like this. So it definitely rogues to me. And I can't wait for that episode. I think that's an episode of what if for yeah. sure. Like, I think that yeah. genuinely would be such a good pitch for what if. And unfortunately, now mm -hmm. anyone on the Internet can steal it once this comes out. MT, copyright it. Do yeah. something. It, copyright listen, this. Honestly, if Kevin Feige wants to just take the idea, go for it. I would love uh, to be in the credits, though. Mm -hmm. All of us. It, it would be cool all, all of us. Of us. Credits. But what do you think, Whitney? Uh, I also think that this is a rogus. And Kevin, if you steal this idea, you owe each of us a cool grand. Cool. Or a hat. No, I'll take the grand. <laughs> I'll take that grand. Take Unless grand. that hat is worth a grand. No, no, then okay, you better no. make sure. The grand <laughs> comes inside of the hat. And Inside like he just puts hat, it on our head. It falls he puts down. it on our head. Yeah. The look, look is here, I'll split it. I'll split even. Hat. Kevin Feige, you gotta kiss me on the lips. Uh <laughs> oh. kiss, kiss me. me on the lips I on camera. I'll take a kiss on the lips, Kevin, if we're offering, if that's on the table. Um, <laughs> I mean, if he can deliver Jonathan Majors, I'll be like set. That's all I'm oh, saying. Oh, wait a minute. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I want Jonathan Majors. Ah. I want Jonathan Majors. Uh, it's like that Rick and Morty episode. No, I still want that five minutes of <laughs> oh, tongue, Kevin. Oh, the, Rick and, <laughs> the Rick and Morty episode where they're like, I'll do anything for bread. And he was like, well, what about food? And he was like, well, I'll watch a kid if I could have more food. We're like betting for Kevin Feige, who's never going to kiss us. Jonathan Majors, yeah. we might get. Maybe. Don't say that. Maybe. Don't you ever put that curse on me. Maybe you Kevin Feige will kiss me on the forehead like my, I dream every Look morning. here. <laughs> Kevin so Feige can't be your dad. Every night as he goes to sleep. <laughs> yes, daddy, Kevin. Yes, please daddy. kiss me to sleep. He is my dad, all right? I, I'll, I'm manifesting a little, a little it. Give me a sweet forehead kiss. Exactly. And then, That's all I want And then Kevin. I'm like, I'm, I'm acting like I'm asleep. And then I go, kiss me, fat boy. And like it. And then I, <laughs> and then I make out with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. But up next, Jess has a really interesting theory that we cannot wait to hear about. But first, be sure to head on over to DuRockStarsMerch.com, where there is still time to grab our latest Obsession shirts, Lady Justice, inspired by the She-Hulk series, and our Ash in Ruin shirt, inspired by House of the Dragon. These limited edition shirts won't be available much longer, so check them out, along with some of our other merch options over at DuRockStarsMerch.com. And we also want to thank Audible for sponsoring this podcast, because listen to the new Audible original the Sandman Act 3, the next installment of the number one New York Times audio bestseller based on the best-selling DC graphic novels written by Neil Gaiman, adapted and directed by the award-winning audio master Dirk Mags. James McAvoy returns in the title role of Morpheus, Lord of Dreams. The stellar cast features Kat Dennings, Kristen Schaal, Jeffrey Wright, Reggae John Page, and Neil Gaiman. New to Act 3 are David Harewood, KJ Appa, and Will Wheaton. In Act 3, we follow Morpheus on a grand journey to take care of family business. He visits with his son Orpheus, an act that comes with profound consequences. Accompanied by Delirium, he tracks down their strange brother, Destruction, the only member of the Endless ever to abandon their post. And in the end, by seeking destruction, Morpheus just might bring those forces upon himself. Act 3 of the Sandman audio epic takes us through the fan favorite collected volumes 8, Brief Lives, and the reality storm tales of volume 7, World's End, a fully immersive listening experience presented for the first time in breathtaking 3D audio. So go deeper into the dreaming, listen now, only on Audible. We also want to thank Wondery for sponsoring this video. Go deeper into the canals of Numenor and the mines of Khazadum and more with the official Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power podcast. Host Felicia Day and several special guests provide an inside look at the groundbreaking series and what it took to bring Middle Earth to life. Each episode of the official podcast features exclusive interviews with the series showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, including the very first full breakdown of the incredible season finale. Felicia also goes behind the scenes with the cast and crew to bring you jaw-dropping stories and Easter eggs that you won't want to miss. Watch the Rings of Power on Prime Video and listen to all eight episodes of the official The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power podcast for free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app right now, today. All right, gang, this leads us to our second topic of today, presented by the wonderful Jessica Clemens. Take it away, Jess. Yes, um, I'll keep mine under five minutes. Um, so I... Okay. <laughs> my theory is that um, in the... 
my theory is that in the newer Blade movie, we're going to be kind of mimicking what we saw in the very first Blade movie, where it's going to be them releasing a demon that has to be put back in hell or in the un in some underworld or some fashion got to be put away. And I think it's going to be Chathone or Cthone, however you guys like to pronounce it. Oh, um, I think he's going to be Cthone, Cthone, Cthone. I'll say Cthone. Oh, I think it's going to. I don't yeah. know. People However always, everyone every corrects video me. I've ever had, people correct me. And I swear, I've like taken their notes and said it the way that people correct me that time. And then when I do that, they tell me, no, it's this way now. And I'm like, you yeah. guys can't, can't please everybody. Can't please everybody. I can't make you happy. Well, mm -hmm. I think Cthone is going to be released in the Blade movie. <laughs> I think Shonda Rhimes is going to be released in the Blade movie. Uh, and I think I think they're going to come out when. So there's different versions of Blade. There's been a bunch of there's been comic books, anime series, uh, the animation, uh, anything. There's a lot of different versions of Blade, but there is a version of Blade that was a series that didn't go past really the pilot series. Uh, didn't do that well. And it was Blade House of Cthone. And I think, though, that's not close to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think they're still going to listen to the movie. And in the movie, the first Blade movie, they were the house of Erebus. That is the follower of like an Egyptian or the god of like just shadows and darkness. And so I think there's different houses that represent different magical beings that are like all powerful or from the beginning of time. And so there is clearly a house of Cthone. So I think people are going to release Cthone and he's going to be like, what the hell happened to Wonder Gore? What the hell happened to all my shit? And he's going to stir up ruckus and blade can't fight him on his own so he's gonna have to team up and i think he'll team up with dracula and i'll think he'll team up with saracen who we saw in mm -hmm. she hulk and i think he'll team up with a bunch of spooky characters that we've already seen in the mcu and maybe we'll get new ones but i think by the time blade comes in 2024 if we do get our sasha baron cohen as mephisto he is also someone they're gonna have to team up with and i don't think it's a team up as in like this is a good team up it's a team up as in like how we saw in what if with Killmonger and Zola and all of them. It's like, mm. we don't want to be a team up. We all hate each other, but we, ha we have to put this mm -hmm. demon yeah. God back into where he's from. So I think him, I think it's going to be this team going against Cthone and the, the souls of the damned and trying to put him back in wherever he is from in the mm. MCU now. Okay. I a hundred and million, 10% agree. And I just did a video on this. Oh. <laughs> with a very similar theory no it's great my no I, I agree with you it's great uh because my it's mine's a little tiny bit different mine is that i think that the reason why saracen was like i lost all my powers i can go in the light now it's so weird i think <laughs> that when the dark hold got destroyed at mount wondegore it like destroyed because you know how all of like the dark creatures draw their powers from the dark hold um, I think that it zapped like the powers of the vampires and that's why like Saracen can go outside in the daylight now. And I think that him and Blade are going to have to try to get their powers back, but Cthon is going to get released and then oh, Hall is going to bring him back and try to send him back to the demon so, realm. So that's mm. how, like, that's like how they get into that fight in my eyes. I, I really like that. Like the, the vampire powers being connected to the dark hole. That'd be really dope. Yeah. I love yeah. that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Cause they are, um, they're just going to, they're going to be like, wait, what the hell happened to the dark hole? What happened to wonder gore? What happened to all my shit? Mm -hmm. Like that's exactly, <laughs> I think what's going on. So yeah. I a billion percent agree with Jess. I agree. I, I feel like it'd be so great to see, First off, a Blade movie. Number two, uh, to, to yeah. see, you know, because obviously with the events of Multiverse of Madness, you know, there's this ambiguous thought as to how the actual ending happened with Wanda and blah, 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 you know, and of course with Wonder Gore. So seeing Cthon, Cthon, Shathon, uh, however he, <laughs> he comes about, I feel like that would be a really great segue into incorporating a lot more of the supernatural side obviously with Blade. Plus, it would obviously give us a great opportunity for Marvel to bring in that big, lovable thug uh, man thing into yeah. the fray yeah. and have Ted. him be a part Ted. of this. Ted. 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 And, Ted. And, Ted. Exactly. Ted. Ted. And have him part of that as like part of this, the deep natural magic of the world is all this is that. Like just to have that as a part of it too, since we got him in, you know, uh, Werewolf by Night. 
I just would love to see him come back. And I think this would be a great opportunity for that. So I am all for this. I'm, I'm all here for this TED talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 okay, so a fun, little, a fun little nugget, a nugget of insider knowledge is that on Slack, we all, everybody in the office changed their names for Halloween and MT <laughs> is just man thing. He's I'm just man, man thing, thing now. Because I'm and MT, I don't think you should thing. ever change it back. I don't think you ever should. <laughs> there you go. That's my spooky holiday name. Bad thing. No, I really like this idea of Chathon coming back because, like, th- that tease in Multiverse of Madness was definitely like, "Here's Chathon. He's canon, and he's actually a big deal in the MCU, so he'll be coming back later." And I definitely feel like um, there is some type of Chathon threat on the horizon in the MCU. So I, I, I just feel like you know him coming back and a bunch of dark forces of the MCU just wanting to take him down just because like he threatens the hierarchy of like the maybe like the demons and the, the dark parts of the, the the universe so it's just like all right unholy alliance let's just get this thing going like you get your freaking your hellstroms your daemon hellstroms and your freaking satanishes and like your daughter of satan uh, i forget the, the daughter of satan's name sit, 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 i forget her name satana satana i don't know is it, did you say Zatanna? S- no, Satana. Uh, s- like Satan, Satan Anna? I don't know. Satan. Um, <laughs> Anna and Satan smushed together. Um, so I, I definitely would lo- I like this idea of a dark alliance forming that let's just very like begrudgingly, like, all right, let's just take down Chathon, even though he's gonna kick our asses probably, but like, you know, let's just do this. Um, but yeah, I, I like this theory a lot. Yeah. But so yeah, I guess let's all vote on it. Like Rogus Vocus, I think we're all pretty much Rogus. Yes! Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, Jess. I hard agree. I'm so Absolutely. glad that we like have the same theory though. That makes yes, me feel it's cool. Quiet. You guys are so both smart. smart. Are you kidding me? All three of you guys are I'm smart. An idiot. Like I would not expect nothing less. <laughs> you guys are smart and three. me and MT are smart because we agree with you. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. We're we're taking your lead. <laughs> um, but amazing theory jess we love this one this yeah. Kind of yeah it's yeah. great jess great i love theory. this so much but now it is time for our rogue question you guys ready for this so ready Here born we go. ready because the black adam man has dropped in theaters this weekend but at this time that we are recording this nobody has really seen the film yet so let's get rogue and have some fun here and so give me your rogue spoiler for black adam having not seen it yet Okay, I think that, uh, you know, how like, like with Shazam, he has to like call out my name and it's like Shazam, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that Black Adam is going to have the same thing. But because it's DTRJ, he's going to have to call out Jumanji at the end, you know, like at some point to activate his powers. He's just going to be like, Jumanji! Jumanji! Like the exact ending of that movie. And it's going to be like Shazam, but better. Yeah, that would be a crazy twist if like Black Adam was, he was like, oh my God, I forgot that I'm in a he's comic like, And I'm also world. a video game character? Weird! <laughs> That's based on a board game from the 1980s? Ah! Oh my God. That's hilarious. I love that one. Jumanji <laughs> Black Adam. What What about you, Jess? I think um, all hell's going to break loose and everyone's like, oh no, what are we going to do? Black Adam's not actually that helpful. <laughs> we didn't know that he was going to not actually help us that much. I'm basing this <laughs> off of that Black Adam just got unfrozen, you guys. And so he's showing up and people are like, help us. Mm. And he's like, I don't know how to help people. I'm, I can barely walk. I got atrophy. Um, so I think when that <laughs> stuff yes. happens, they're going to look into the sky and they're going to be like, oh, it's Superman. He's here to help us. And it lands on the ground and it's actually Shazam. Oh. And Shazam's going to be like, Yay. we have the same powers. <laughs> do you also have the same friend? And Shazam's going to be like, do you want to play Jumanji? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> do you want to play Jumanji together? It's like, yes, of course. You want to watch this great movie that came out with The Rock and Jack Black? And <laughs> he's like, who's The Rock? He's handsome. I bet he's got a great line of tequila, too. Um, <laughs> I feel like the way it's going to end is we're going to get this scene where uh, it's just Black Adam by himself. And then we see this portal opening up. And this bright light shines and all of a sudden these two figures come out of the uh, out of the portal and you just see their silhouettes. And when the light finally dims, it's actually Stephen Amell as Green Arrow and oh Grant Gustin God. as the Flash. And he's like, hey, we need your help. Come to our universe. And then we get a little stint of a couple episodes of uh, Black Adam in the CW. Whoa. Oh, fun. That would CW be... Black Adam. I don't know, guys. <laughs> he's too, he's I, too old. CW-ifying Dwayne is hilarious. That would be uh, so funny. But hey, Dwayne, 
Dwayne gets money. So, like, Dwayne, I feel like, would be down for it. He's just really chill. Franchise Viagra, baby. Mm -hmm. He'll get that Franchise boner going. There go. Franchise Blue Chew. Exactly. Comic book Blue Chew. I was just going to say. Comic <laughs> book Blue Chew. Blue Chew for the DCEU. There you go. Yo, Blue Chew should pay The Rock to change his name to The Chew. The Chew. DC the Chew. chew. <laughs> the oh my gosh. It's like chew. B C F T D C E U. <laughs> there you go that's that's a mouthful <laughs> super easy to say but no i love all of these uh but i'm gonna have to give this the one to whitney for her jumanji one because like thank you i like thank a good you. jumanji thank reference yeah. I'm, I'm a child of the 90s <laughs> you guys are all amazing people yeah i love going rogue with each and every one of you thank you to all of you for joining me on this episode and of course, to our amazing guests, Jessica Clemens, Wendy Van Lenningham, and Eddie Villanueva. Support our channel by checking out all of our awesome merch over at NewRockstarsMerch.com. And of course, head on over to Eddie's podcast, uh, the Philosopher's Podcast. Um, he does some really great stuff over there, so uh, check that out too. You can share some of our, your own rogue theories on our Discord. If you're over 18, check the link for the new Rockstars Discord server in the description and join the conversation today. You can follow me at Mastertainment if you want to see me tweet some weird shit. You can follow new Rockstars on all social platforms and be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. We love you guys so much. Thank you guys for spending time with us. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Da, 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 da.